Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is in order message delivery using Azure Bus Service Bus Sessions and Logic App Standard. Let's go. So why is this episode important? So in order delivery, otherwise known as sequential convoy pattern, is popular in integration solutions. And with Service Bus Standard in the past, this was difficult to implement. Chances are you had to sort of build some custom component to do this or you ended up using consumption. Now we've added some actions and, and triggers as well to uh, allow for the built-in connector to help us with this. And this applies to both queues and topics. Today's video, I'm gonna focus on queues. Now there's a few prerequisites or, or things that you should sort of understand getting into this. Number one, in order to make this work, you will need to connect your Logic App to a VNet. And this is very similar to the peak lock pattern where we go ahead and you can re retrieve a message and then choose what you want to do with that message. Uh, perhaps you want to complete it or you may want to abandon it in the case of perhaps some downstream errors that may occur. And so that is still very much applicable in this case as well, where we need to go ahead and do so. Now, one question you know, people say is, well, why do I need a VNet you know, to go ahead and do this? And so as part of the AMQP protocol, what ends up happening is that the consumer, uh, in this case, Logic Apps, who's going to retrieve the message, that particular consumer needs to be the same consumer that either completes or abandons it. Um, naturally, you go ahead and use a message ID in order to go ahead and perform that operation, but that needs to come from the same place. So what we do need to do is allow for some inter-node communication to happen. Um, Logic Apps is a single tenant service, Logic App Standard, but naturally you can scale it to multiple nodes. So we have to account for those different scenarios. So these nodes do need to communicate with each other and certainly they're gonna go ahead and do so um, over a private link, a private network, as opposed to going over the internet. So you will need to set up a VNet to get this to work. Probably a good uh, you know, thing to do regardless, especially if you wanna to connect to on-premises systems. Now the next piece is you will need to set the VNet private ports count to two. This can be done either using the RESTful API or PowerShell commandlet. And I will go ahead and show you a resource that describes how to do this. It's, it's rather harmless and uh, something that you can quickly go ahead and do. The other thing is you wanna make sure that you have matching numbers in the Logic App Scale-Out page for always ready instances and maximum scale-out limit and maximum burst as well. I'll show you a resource to that. But uh, let's go ahead, let's dive deeper into the solution. All right, so a few resources that I do wanna call out here. Uh, number one, Divya, a colleague on the team, recently put out a blog post that describes the new actions and trigger that does support sessions. I'll include links to all of these articles uh, in the description as well. So uh, you do wanna go ahead and check out that. Previously on the channel, I have put out a video that describes how you can go ahead and set up your VNet. So go ahead and check out that video if you haven't seen it. And then also you can see that there's another web page here related to enabling stateful mode for stateless built connectors in Azure Logic App. So this is gonna talk about those other two characteristics about the VNet ports and the maximum instances as well. So let's just flip over to those resources quickly and take a closer look. All right, so here's Divya's blog post. Uh, you can see here, we've got a new trigger and what we're going to do is um, be able to go ahead and specify on new message from a queue session or on new message from topic session as well. Uh, here's where we'll, we'll go ahead and describe the session ID if we want to. We also have some control over the maximum number of messages to receive. And this is something to be aware of as well. There's also, this is more of a polling connector. So you can choose how often you wanna check for new items. So uh, she has a basically a screenshot of a, a workflow. I've recreated this and so we'll show that in more detail here shortly. So that's that piece. Now let's flip over to the other, um, document here. So it talks about uh, Azure portal and connecting to a VNet. Um, so I do have that video as well. Then we're going to get into that situation where we need to update the VNet private ports count and set it to two. There's two choices here. You can use the Azure resource management API 
And uh, this is how I went ahead and did this. Um, otherwise, you can also use PowerShell as well. Kind of up to you in terms of which one you prefer to go ahead and use. And then lastly, you can also see uh, when we talk about the maximum instances and the always ready instances, that is located here. So you can go ahead and read out more about that uh, in this particular article. So I would suggest familiarizing yourself with those different articles. I think it'll probably um, uh, avoid some, <laughs> some uh, you know, frustration if you try to just roll this yourself. All right, so let's talk about a scenario. This is something I've used before uh, in the business process tracking situation. Uh, the use case comes from a utility where you get a trouble ticket that comes in from a customer and you need to go ahead and dispatch that to a field technician. So this is a situation where you want to make sure these events occur in order. And, and this comes from a scenario back in the day where uh, I was involved with BizTalk. And certainly when you're updating your ERP, uh, you wanna make sure that all of these uh, basically messages are processed in order. You wouldn't want the technician to be on site at the customer's house before they're on route. Uh, the idea is they're on route and they then arrive to the customer site and then they're there to do the work. Uh, similarly, you wouldn't want work order complete to occur before the on-site. Uh, you can then overwrite data and mislead actually the current state of the business process. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of simulate what this would look like. We're going to send five messages and we're going to then go ahead and see how they are processed. So we've got a sender workflow and then we've got a basically a receiver workflow. And um, yeah, let's dive into the portal and I'll show you how this was all built. All right, so I am in the portal naturally. I'm in the sender. And what I have here is a HTTP request. This is just so I can easily go ahead and kick off the workflow. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna generate a random work order number. Um, this is pretty important because I'm going to use this in my sessions. I don't want my sessions to overlap with each other. And, um, you know, because this is more of just a POC, I'm just going to go ahead and use the random expression to generate this work order for me. Uh, then what I have here is I just have this, uh, you know, this work order message that I kind of copy and paste. And as I work through the various scenarios or like I will go ahead and update this to include more information. So I'll go ahead and I will send my first message here. So this is going to be my work order create. Then what I'm going to do just to simulate some, uh, you know, delays, like these things don't happen immediately. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, modify this delay. So I'm going to artificially go ahead and do that. Now you can sort of ramp this up. Uh, I was trying this earlier with five minutes delayed. It still worked without an issue, um, but you know, go ahead and sort of you know tweak that as you see fit. Then I'll go ahead and I will compose my dispatch order. I will then send my dispatch. Now I should sort of pause here for a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and send this uh, to a queue. This is called my order delivery queue, and I'm going to send my message. And this message is going to come from that compose. And then my session ID is coming from that particular, uh, you know, variable that I had gone ahead, or I guess it was a compose, this, this value here. And so that's the same thing that would have happened inside of this particular workflow where I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is kind of like a correlation token or ID. You need these things to match up. Uh, these are all related to the same order, work order. And hence that makes, you know, a lot of sense to, to, to have that common value so that we can go ahead and stitch these experiences together on the back end when we go ahead to process them. Once again, two minute delay. Then we're gonna go ahead and send our on route message. We'll go ahead and do so once again. Um, we're updating our content. This is gonna be based on our on route message. And then we've got our session ID, which is gonna be that random order number. Then we're gonna go ahead and construct our on site message. We'll send it. Then we're going to go ahead and compose our work order complete, and then we'll go ahead and send it. So this will, you know, take, you know, roughly 10 minutes to go ahead and process, and we'll have all of these messages sitting up on the queue. Now let's go to our receiver 
and let's open this up in the designer. Now, what I've got here is I've got on new messages from a queue session, right? So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go ahead and pick up the first message that's available. And here, I'm saying to go ahead and do this every 20 seconds. Um, this is kind of arbitrary, but um, you know I went ahead and, and did that. Now, as part of this particular compose, I'm going to go ahead and extract the session ID out of the message that was received. And the other thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is define the number of messages that have been processed. So we know if we look back at that diagram in the slides that I'm expecting five messages total. And so that's what I'm going to do here. This represents the first message being received. Now, next up, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and complete that first message. And so this goes back to why we need that VNet uh, communication. Uh, this is, is going to go ahead and you know complete that inside a service bus and I'm using the message ID to go ahead and communicate that. Then what I've got here is a parallel branch. So there's kind of two things that are going on. Uh, you know let's start with the left. I'm gonna go ahead and renew a queue session. So I want to keep this alive and this you know so this is gonna come down partly to sort of your requirements and I would also suggest just testing this as well. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is keep this alive every 30 seconds. I'm going to you know, make sure that I've got a queue session enabled. And then what we're going to do on, on the other side is we're going to go ahead and you know, count the number of messages that have been received. So that's what I've got here. I've got this message process, processed variable. Once it's equal to five, I know we've received and processed all of our five messages. So this goes back up to that variable here. We initially set it to one because we've received one message. And then as we go ahead and, and retrieve subsequent messages from the queue, we're gonna go ahead and increment that messages process. Now, because we don't know like when we're gonna expect that the next message, um, you know, the, we're, the, we're gonna have this loop looping continuously to go ahead and to check. But to make sure our session doesn't expire, that's why we're gonna go ahead and renew this particular uh, queue session and once again we need that session ID uh, in order to make that work. Now here we've got get messages from a queue session so we're going to once again go ahead and use the uh, queue the session ID here and this is going to come from the message body itself and then what we'll go ahead and do for each message uh, all we're doing is um, you know here I'm just going to go ahead and display the content just so that inside of the run history we can actually see uh, you know the contents then we're going to go ahead and complete that message using the message id and then we're going to go ahead and increment the message itself and so once again this is going to continue to run uh, until we have um, basically five messages and you know this is the default we're going to check it like it's going to check 60 times over the course of one hour obviously you'll have to tweak these values as you see fit. So that's kind of what's happening here is we've got these two do and two um, uh, loops that are occurring. One stream is gonna go ahead and get messages from the queue. The other is gonna go make sure that we have a queue session that remains active. Once we've received all five messages, then we know that we're good. And at that point, we can basically stop this particular process. So let's head over uh, to our overview here. And you can see here these last two, uh, these last two uh, scenarios from the sender that took place. And so I had sent these in uh, basically like 37 seconds apart. So this, the whole point is that, you know, we shouldn't have these sessions that are, um, are like uh, interrupting each other. Like, so I send two batches of messages in and on the receiver, I should see two basically workflows that are receiving these particular messages. So let's start off with the first one here. And we're gonna go ahead and check this out. So we go ahead, we receive the request, we then send in a message, and uh, we can go ahead and check out this particular work order. Uh, we can see that it ends in 198. And so um, that's something that we'll look for. All of these messages that are sent in should have this uh, session ID that ends in 198. So we did that for the basically the first instance. If we go to the second instance, 
we see that it ends in 287. So let's let's check out our receiver now and we'll look at this first one that was received. So see here we can see that we've got our session ID which is 198 and we can see that the message that was processed is now set to 1. Now so here you can see that uh, because this did take some time we did loop over this 14 times uh, in order to get like the, the data out that we were interested in. And if we go ahead and check out these particular messages, so here we can see that we've got a message that's been received. Uh, it's on route and we can go ahead and see that the case or the, the session ID is that 198. Now you will notice that like you have to wait for the for each message to show up here because what we can do is like if there is no messages that are returned from this action, uh, you're not going to see anything to go ahead and, and uh, interrogate here. So as you're sort of clicking through these, go ahead and you'll see like when it shows like one of one that you've actually received a message. Because remember that this is going to continue to loop um, over and over and, you know, go ahead and see if there's any new messages from that queue session. So here's the next one before it was on route. Now we're on site. Once again, we've got 198. At this point, we're several minutes like into the process. And so that other workflow will be processing messages from a different session. So that's uh, important to understand as well. So if we go ahead and fast forward here a little bit. Yeah, so here's another one and we've got it's now complete. So that shows you uh, this particular instance or this particular session. Now let's go back to the, the other one and we'll open it up. If we look at the session ID, right, this is going to be that 287. If we come down here, this one looped 16 times. Go through here and here we go. Now we can go ahead and see that in this case it is 287 and this is dispatched. Now we're on route, now we're on site, and now we're complete. So yeah, so that's uh, basically a walkthrough of how you can get sessions to work. And hopefully that, that helps you out as you go ahead and build out your in-order delivery use cases. Thanks and take care.